Guys, in this video, we'll see how to create edge functions using Superbase in Dart language. We have this website created using Veet. What this does is it fetches the latest 20 videos from the Superbase YouTube channel and displays it on our website. You can play the videos directly from this website. So for instance, we want to click on this. In this episode of SG Edge Function. And we also have this search bar where you can simply type in any keyword. So for instance, you want to search for OpenAI. So it gives you the search results for the videos having this content. And you can also clear this search result by just clicking on this X button. And this brings it back to the original state. This is the current architecture diagram for our setup. Let's start from the left hand side where we have our client. In our case, it's our website. So when the user loads our website, the first request goes to our Dart Edge function. Let's say video fetcher. This edge function calls the data from the Postgres hosted in Superbase account. The response which we get from the Postgres is returned back to the client and the client saves the data inside the cache. The next requests from the client are then fetched from the cache itself. This is our Superbase account. On the left hand side, we can see various options. Let's see the database first. We have two tables inside our database. The first is the video items and the second is the videos. For checking what's inside these tables, we head over to the table editor. Inside this, we see the rows and the schema. For instance, ID, created a channel ID, etc. There are total about 20 rows. Next, let's have a look at our edge functions. So we have this one edge function called a super with fetcher and let's click on this edge function it shows us the endpoint url when it was created last updated and how many deployments have been taken place this is a quick way what is the proper command for deploying an edge function heading over to the top we can see another tab called as metrics we can see the execution time for this edge function and how many invocations have been occurred and since we are on the topic of invocations, let's go to the third tab. We can see the logs which are here. The last tab is the logs tab, which comprises of event messages or additional metadata with a request. Let's start by first installing the Superbase CLI. So let's look at the different installation options. For instance, NPM, macOS. In our case, we will be using NPM. And remember, if you are using this approach, we need to prefix each command with NPX. So let's copy this command, paste this, so it installs the Superbase. The next step would be to create a Superbase project. We head over to the Superbase website. We already have an account. In case you haven't, the signing process is very straightforward. Once you have the project set up, you need to log into your project using Superbase CLI. For logging in to the Superbase CLI, we make use of this command npx superbase login and on running this command, it asks us to generate an access token. We generate the new access token by clicking on this button here and after generating, we just paste it here. As everything is set up now, it's time to initialize our project. So for that, we first create a project folder. We have this created bare bones web. We go inside this folder and run this command. So this command basically generates some files. So for instance, it has generated a Superbase folder which comprises of config toml and seed SQL. The next step would be to run the command superbase start. But before we do that, we need to make sure the Docker installed on our machines. We run the command npx superbase start and we see that the superbase start is already running. And what this means is that we already had set it up. Go back to the Docker. All our containers were already set up and running. In case this is your first time running this, you would see started Superbase local development setup. We can verify this by going to the URL localhost 54323 and here we can see this website is up. We see all the options which were available in the Superbase website. Let's start writing our edge function. What's an edge function? They are server-side TypeScript functions that are distributed globally at the edge. There are three ways of writing edge functions. First one is using Vercel Edge. The second is using Cloudflare Workers. And the third, Superbase Edge Functions. Superbase Edge Functions are runnable functions that are distributed globally at the edge. And these are developed using Dino. And what's Dino? It's a runtime for JavaScript, TypeScript, based on V8 JavaScript engine. 
For writing edge function in Dart, we need to install a package edge. It's a project running Dart code on edge functions and this package is developed and published by Invertase. Let's now run the command edge new superbase function followed by the project name. It asks us if we want to create a project and then it creates a project at the desired directory. We open this Dart project and we see different Dart files. The first step we do is install the Dart dependencies using Dart pub get. Going through the files which we see in this project, let's start with pubspec yaml. So it comprises of two dependencies. The first is edge and the second is superbase functions. Superbase functions is a Dart package which is published by Invertase and this helps us in writing and deploying superbase functions using Dart. Back in our project, we see there is only one main.dat file and this comprises of a superbase function, hello from superbase edge functions. If we want to deploy our edge function locally, we can do so in two steps. On the left hand side, we can see the first step by calling edge build superbase functions dash dash dev. It starts a build watcher which will recompile any changes you make to your project. On the right hand side, we run the dart edge function by calling superbase functions serve dash dash no verify jwt. And let's test this function now. And if we run the local host, we can see the response as hello from superbase edge functions. While deploying the superbase functions, there are different flags available. For instance, jwt means we disable the jwt verification. And the same needs to be done from the superbase dashboard. We will be writing two types of Dart Edge functions, video fetcher and the second one is the video saver. For fetching the videos from the database, we first need to create a Superbase client and this client takes in three parameters. The first one, the Superbase URL, which we can get from the Dino environment variables. The second one is the Superbase key, which we also get from the Dino environment variable. And the third one is the Edge HTTP client, which basically comes in from the Superbase package. Next, we modify the Superbase function by calling in dot from from the Superbase client. And in this, we specify our table name, which is video items. And then then we perform the select operation. This is the schema of the video items table. This table currently has 20 rows. We return the response as JSON with the data from the video items table. Additionally, we pass in our course headers. These headers are basically used to silence the course errors once we call this endpoint from the React application. Let's now deploy this edge function by first calling edge build superbase functions. The second step is to deploy this build function using the superbase functions deploy. And as we can see now, the project has been deployed. This project ref which you get when you create a project and this ID should match with the one which you have created in the superbase. Let's test this edge function now and we can see here the response in the form of a JSON. We can see in the invocations tab and in the logs itself, the timestamp is of now. This video saver edge function internally invokes the YouTube API and for doing that we first need to set up a Google project and the second thing enable the YouTube API in that Google project. The response from the YouTube API is transformed and saved inside our Postgres table. So this is our Google project. We need to enable the YouTube API. So for that we search for YouTube API. Lastly we just need to enable this and just to make sure you don't get a max maximum bill, you need to adjust the quota of this API. Coming back to our edge functions, we now need to install two packages. The first one is Google APIs and the second one is Google APIs auth. This Google APIs comprises of the YouTube data API. Google APIs auth is used for obtaining the OAuth credentials. In the Dart side, we first create a new file called video fetcher. This file has two functions. The first one is the video fetcher and the second one is the video fetcher sample. We also import the packages Google APIs and Google APIs auth. In the function video fetcher sample, we basically get a dummy data, which is sample data. And this is nothing but the actual response, but saved inside our project. 
The video fetcher function is the main function which is responsible for calling the YouTube APIs. We first get the channel ID of the Superbase YouTube channel. We create service account credentials. From the service account credentials, we are able to create the credentials which are required. The values of these parameters can be found out in your Google service account. So this is our Google Cloud project. Inside this, we go to the service account. We navigate to the keys section. And here you need to create either a new key or upload existing key. You will be able to download a JSON file which comprises of the required parameters. Next, we need to authorize the client with the credentials we got from the previous step. We will be calling client via service account function which is basically used for obtaining OAuth credentials. In the first parameter, we pass in the credentials and in the second parameter, we need to pass in the scopes. We create a YouTube API client and from this client, we are calling the search function. This YouTube client has different options inside it and one such option is search. And inside this, we will be calling the list method. The representation from this list method is a JSON and this is the structure of a search result. So it comprises of kind, some snippets and all these properties are explained in the doc here. In this list method, we are passing in different parameters, max results, which says how many results we want in our JSON response the type as video which means we specify that we don't want any other type of content for instance live we close the client and then return the search results inside our main.dat file we now have another endpoint video cron and the previous video saver function is now enclosed in the dot edge endpoint in the video cron endpoint we first call the handle request method inside this we call the function video fetcher the reason why we call video fetcher like this is because it's an edge function client that client is edge http client comes in from the superbase package itself the response is saved and returned back we loop over the search results which are presented in the form of a list of search result we get the video id that youtube uses to uniquely identify a video resource the superbase client as well as this video id is passed on to a function does row exist we basically query the results from the video items table since video id is unique for any youtube video we identify if a video exists already by doing a select operation on the table video items back in our endpoint if the video id is not present we proceed to insert the video inside our database so this is our video items table and it comprises of different parameters video id which is unique for any row we simply make use of the search result video and from that we extract the snippet we get the channel id and from the video parameter we get the e tag as well as the video id after the inserting is done we return the json ok response data processed we make use of the npx superbase command to deploy this dart edge function I will be removing all the records by clicking on these delete 20 rows. We now call the endpoint dot edge slash video cron from the curl. And as we can see, the data processed message has come. So let's go to the superbase. We see that we are able to get the latest 20 videos. And for cross checking, I just click on all these and we can see that there are 20 rows here. Our client application, a React app, and inside this, we call in our endpoint, the base URL, which is our project URL, and then the endpoint, which is our edge function. Let's start our app using npm run dev. We see the app is launched on the local host and here we can see the videos which are fetched from our edge function. And once the initial request goes to our edge function, the response is then cached in the browser's local storage. The response is cached here as the list of videos, which in our case is a list of 20 items. We are able to search for any keyword and if the keyword is hit, we show the videos only with the searched keyword and we can just play. Accordingly. That's it from this video guys and thanks for watching.